What makes a student successful in your program? A successful student in the program is someone who is curious, enjoys tinkering, um, has a few projects of their own going on, and um, is really looking forward to having a career in something that is an application of uh, science or engineering or mathematics and something that they can get their hands into. Um, so a mechanic, a technician, um, a, a machine operator, um, things like that that uh, really interest uh, me for the students and um, someone who's really uh, interested in, in building and putting different things together um, is, is usually a successful student in, in this program. Uh, what about you? Um, a student that's successful in my program is one that's interested in problem solving. Um, someone that's a curious thinker um, that is interested in mathematics, um, classes like that they've taken before and um, felt like they would be successful in them. Um, so somebody who's always solving problems, always thinking and is um, willing to explore. Engineering students are interested in uh, finding ways to collect data. So if you're solving a problem, you need to figure out what the problem is. You need to um, collect information about that. You need to analyze data and you need to come up with solutions. So an engineering student would be interested in design. Um, and to design, you need a lot of tools in your inventory. So you'd be focused on classes that will help you uh, think outside of the box and come up with designs that are new. What is the outcome of the two-year uh, associate's degree? Um, what are your transfer options and maybe jobs after the two-year degree? Um, and do you prepare for um, types of jobs or academic programs? Yeah, so at the end of a two-year degree, uh, an associates of science and engineering, you would be ready to transfer to a four-year engineering program. Um, and beyond that, um, you could also have internships. Um, so working as an engineering technician, um, starting out usually when you're still getting your four-year degree, the outcome would be the focus is on transferring to an engineering program at a four-year university. Okay. What um, Can you list some of the four-year institutions? So we've had students transfer all over the country from PDCC's engineering program. Uh, most commonly students transfer into um, one of the other four years in the state. Um, so yeah, Virginia Tech, VCU, UVA, GWU, ODU. Those are our main partners for transfer. From a four-year institution, our students would finish with a bachelor's of science and engineering. Um, and that typically after that, they would either go to graduate school or they could plan to enter the workforce as an engineer in training. Um, and those, so you can come out of after a four-year degree and start working as an engineer professionally, um, but you may continue to go on to graduate school if you wanted to teach or be involved in research in engineering. I would say for, for us, we're mostly focused on getting students prepared for skills in the workforce and um, becoming uh, aware of the potential possibilities in manufacturing electronics and uh, maybe mechanical engineering uh, fields, and specifically in entry level um, to some, some higher degree skill-based jobs. Um, we do have transfer options with uh, Old Dominion University in their mechanical engineering technology program and their electrical engineering technology program. So a little bit different, the um, students do have some option to go to a four-year program that has different requirements than the normal degree. There's a higher math requirement, things like that. Um, but for the most part, uh, the majority of the students are preparing for the workforce in local industry, including um, you know, Emerson Automation, um, Microsystems, Siemens, Virginia Diodes, Northrop Grumman, just to name a few. What do your students gain as a result of your program? Sure, the students get experience in hands-on activities and skill-based training that includes 3D printers, CAD CAM software, CNC technology, laser cutters, a, a lot of the popular advanced manufacturing, um, as well as uh, safety training in general 
machinery, including manual lathes, mills, um, and power equipment. We also focus on electronics. That includes microcontroller design and um, automated control through PLC or programmable logic controllers. Um, so we do a little bit of circuit design, PCB, printed circuit board layout, um, as well as programming and controlling um, circuit systems, including analysis and using tools in, in the field, um, like a multimeter and oscilloscope to, to analyze uh, what we're doing in the circuit. Um, so quite a, quite a range of skills from software to hardware to machinery um, to sort of provide a well-rounded experience in, in, in advanced manufacturing, manufacturing, or intelligent operator field. Um, what, what about you? What skills, knowledge, and sort of applications do students gain uh, in the engineering program? So engineering is flexible. Um, we have a small program and our students are interested in many different types of engineering fields. So chemical, mechanical, electrical, materials. Um, we can, we offer classes for many of those um, areas. So students come in and they all start with the introduction sequence of engineering courses. Mm -hmm. uh, so teaching sign methods that engineers would use um, talking about teamwork, uh, documentation skills. So it really gets you ready to work in a team environment. And that along with um, the math, physics, uh, computer science courses uh, that fill in the degree, uh, you can really choose to focus on a certain path. So you might take all of the courses we offer in mechanics. So solid mechanics or statics and then materials deformation um, up to dynamics. Um, and we offer thermodynamics and systems engineering courses. So we have a range that will fit different interests so that when you transfer, you're already down the path of your specific area. Um, so you can pick up skills in any of those particular areas of engineering, um, but you'll start out with a solid foundation in math that you need to transfer. Hmm. So to piggyback, what, what kind of math requirements do you have in, in your program? So our students usually take up through um, calculus three or, or it could also be called multivariable calculus. Um, so if you haven't come in with calculus one completed, then you would take calculus one, two, and three. Also differential equations is offered and you may choose to take that before you transfer. Um, and other math such as vector geometry and linear algebra, you can take here or at your transfer institution. We um, usually have an entry level math course, technical mathematics, which ties, a lot, uh, pretty, ties pretty well in with like our introductory electronics courses and CAD courses. And we focus on algebra, trigonometry, geometry, um, just to give a good baseline of understanding of um, simple, simple equations and relationships. Say a student has taken one or two classes in engineering or in our degree, um, how, do, how do you see students kind of moving back and forth? Or let's say they've taken a few classes at Piedmont, is it easy for them to kind of jump into engineering or do you, do you see that often? Like uh, jumping into engineering from your degree? Yeah, either my degree or other degrees um, or coming in you know, with some maybe some dual enrollment credits or something like that? Um, engineering is open to dual enrollment credits. Um, it can be difficult if you're very far into another degree to switch into engineering just because of the math sequencing. Um, and if you have kept up with the math classes, then they should follow along well with the classes in higher engineering. But if you haven't, then you'll need to catch up on the math before you can really take any of the higher courses, you know, sophomore and junior level courses in, in engineering. Mm. Yeah, I would, I would say trying to go back and forth between the, the two degrees where I think, and please correct me if I'm wrong, yours is pretty academically driven to try to transfer to that four year program. Um, 
whereas we're a little more industry driven trying to provide someone um, with you know job experience and things like that um, not that both things occur in both programs but um, I think students who start out in my program since yours is a transfer based program and schools look at those courses they don't normally accept the courses in the industrial electronics as engineering courses because of the way that they're structured and the way that they are they cover different materials and content um, whereas sometimes the reverse is is okay students taking a higher level engineering course may be able to transfer that into um, the electronics program just because it's not specifically designed to be that transfer course so there's a little flexibility one way and sometimes not the other way um, maybe because the engineering path is you know it's a pretty rigorous path um, you know to, to make sure you've either fit all the requirements for the four-year institution but also to make sure that you hit all the maths and things like you said that's no, true and the engineering degree is very compact mm -hmm. we do have technical electives uh, so that students can choose which courses they want to put into their academic study mm -hmm. but if um, they don't meet the transfer requirements then that's something you'll have to be careful about as a student it's a case-by-case -case basis sometimes what, what do you love most about your program what I love most about my program uh, is that the students are thinking about design and creativity. Uh, so we're challenging each other to come up with out of the box ideas. So in our projects, we get to try anything that we can think of. Um, and it's a good sandbox because if you fail a class project, you know, in terms of your design not working out, then that's not a big deal. So we're preparing students by letting them uh, be really creative and see what what comes out of it um, and i think that that's the most fun part of it uh, i love that we're flexible and that we have a lot of options for people so that in any class we usually have 10 different um, degree fields of interest so our conversations are really full of perspectives um, from different types of people people interested in different challenges mm. yeah that's great um, yeah, I would say what I, what I really enjoy is the intersection between also having a diverse student pool um, and meeting industry needs and also being able to combine a bunch of fields together in, in one program. Um, working with a lot of the companies, we get to put students out into the field in an internship pretty early on in their career and a lot of times students get hired in in those jobs which is really fantastic um, or they get an experience that they normally wouldn't have had um, because they're in the program and learning a lot of this stuff um, and that's tied to some apprenticeships that we have um, that have built as a result of some of this work and, and the degree um, that has allowed students who are working full-time to to take the degree um, all of our courses are in the evening currently um, so that helps allow for students who are working full time, have families, have, uh, you know, daily responsibilities, um, can still take a course at night. And, you know, we have one course once a week. That's usually a lab course. So uh, depending on how things sort of roll out, it's, it's easier to schedule um, in a way than, you know, a, a standard English class or something like that. Um, so we try to be a little bit flexible with knowing people are working full time and then also being able to train them to what industry wants. That's pretty exciting, like you said, to try to keep up with everything that's going on, um, you know, advancing technology and <laughs> one, one year they're using this model and the next year they're not. <laughs> and it's like we need to figure out how to make sure that we can accommodate all all the needs and, and keep reaching out and, and, you know, stay on top of what's going on. So the people we put into the community are, you know, skilled, trained and, and, you know, excited to do what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I like that. That's good. And they, uh, they're ready for the constant learning, um, the continuous learning of life just by, because mm -hmm. they see us learning new, <laughs> new technology and new software all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You allow our students 
end up hanging out together because we share lab space. So it's pretty neat to see like a uh, sort of this already budding like relationship between, you know, two types of students who like to tinker, who like to design um, and maybe just take different approaches to it. Um, you know, some maybe more scientific, yeah. mathematical, while some maybe just want to take it apart and see how it works. And, you know, and then sometimes both flip flop. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely feel you on that. And, you know, yeah, I mean, if you want to put a, a plug in, I think, you know, any, anyone who likes to like tinker, design, play, or has taken a class maybe in high school or, you know, in the past that, that really enjoys like, yeah, like keeping up with technology or even just like playing with new stuff or taking apart old stuff, like both of these paths might, might be for you. You know? Yeah, I think that's where we get, um, you know, most of the questions. We have students who are interested in both of our programs who share similar interests and hobbies, um, like you said, tinkering kind of people. Um, and they definitely work together. I see students always curious in each other's projects in the labs. Um, so it's, like you said, the different perspective of thinking about why, how something works and how you could take it apart and fix it. Um, and, you know, if you're inspired to go beyond that and see how you could design something to be totally different, then you, you know, you might be more interested in engineering. And if you want to be really good at knowing everything about, you know, the tools that you have available for you to use, then you might be more interested in, in um, Eric's program. Um, 